Good morning, Sunnyvale. Good to see you. We'll get started in just a few moments. Happy Friday. We should make sure that the, our sound is working. We never know when we have those problems. If you have any questions, just go ahead and add them to the chat and I'll try to get to them before the end of the meeting. Um, <clears throat> hope everyone's doing well. Good morning, Sunnyvale. Happy Friday. Uh, welcome to summer. Welcome, you know, Wednesday, of course, was the summer solstice, uh, the longest day of the year. So uh, now the days will start getting shorter. Uh, so enjoy the sun while we have it. Uh, enjoy these long days. Um, you know, welcome to my weekly virtual office hours. You know, this week's early artwork is actually from a brand new mural in Sunnyvale. Um, this is on one of the water towers <clears throat> in uh, Moffat Park. So, so if you've had a, if you get a chance to look near the smart station, you'll see this very interesting piece of artwork. Uh, so this is uh, on one of the Google properties, but uh, they basically ringed their, the water tower with um, different uh, animals from basically that you would see here in Sunnyvale. So I think this is one of the burrowing owls. So uh, really great, really great piece of artwork. And you know how how much um, the mayor loves his artwork and we're getting a lot of art around the city. And so happy, happy to see that uh, occurring. Um, let me go ahead and uh, remove my new background. And go back to no background. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Thank you for joining me again this week. It's been another busy week uh, in the life of the mayor, uh, but this is the 164th installment of my weekly office hours. You know, I hope everyone is doing well, um, staying healthy, enjoying the good weather while we have it. Uh, it's, it's really been the, the, the June gloom has really started um, overcast in the morning and then clearing. But, you know, we've now reached 1,194 days since the March 16, 2020 cal county health order started the shelter in place in an attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. Over three years ago, I converted my weekly coffee shop office hours into these weekly live stream addresses. And, you know, um, people still say they enjoy hearing from their mayor each week, you know, and thanks for everyone who's, in, who's joined us over the last few years. You know, it's, it's really great way for me to reach a lot more people than I can at the coffee shop. You know, although sometimes I would have, you know, 10 and a few weeks ago, I had about 20 people around the table uh, wanting to talk to their mayor. 
But, you know, this allows people to, you know, touch in with the mayor, figure out, you know, and allows me to provide you um, some updates on what's happened at a city level, you know, what's upcoming from an events and just provide you some general words of encouragement. So thank you for, for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale. You know, most Fridays I follow up this live stream uh, session with in-person meetings at Bean Seen on Murphy Avenue. Uh, if you would like to reserve 15 or 30 minute time slot, just email me at council at larrykline.com. You know, today I'll actually be at an event later this morning, which I'll be talking about in a few minutes. But you can always see my calendar at larrykline.com. And, you know, that will, that's the easiest way to, to know where the mayor um, is going to be when, when the office hours are and all the, some of all the events that I'm attending uh, on behalf of the city or on behalf of um, just being a active community person. Uh, let's go ahead and get started and talk about what's happened to federal, state, county, and city level over the last few weeks. Last Thursday, um, I had my last class for the Bloomberg Harvard Leadership Training. You know, a year ago, I was chosen for um, the Bloomberg Harvard Leadership class, and it was one of 40 mayors from um, around the world, you know, 28 in the US, uh, 12 international. Within California, we actually had the mayor for San Diego, the mayor of Compton, the mayor of Sacramento, and the mayor of Sunnyvale uh, representing California. But it was around the world. You know, it was actually great from, from uh, my standpoint to see some of the challenges we face from um, a city standpoint. You know, and they were picking some of the best mayors, some of the best cities around the country <clears throat> to go through this leadership class training. Uh, to look at best practices. And, you know, most of what you do once you get elected is on the job training. So it was really great to be chosen to get additional education and talk about, you know, best practices and, and ultimately get additional resources for the city, uh, which has been actually really great. You know, it gave me perspective on, you know, are the challenges that we face and Sunnyvale is in a very good position. Um, but it also, you know, it sent me, the city manager, the assistant city manager to New York City for a four day kind of educational, an initial educational training kickoff. And then on a monthly basis, we've been meeting via Zoom. Uh, and then, you know, for, from that standpoint, it's also kicked off, you know, Bloomberg Harvard's provided additional resources um, to make sure that uh, there's actual additional of uh, um, programs that the city can run. So, so it's been good from that standpoint um, to see where things are going, you know, and, and for, for my standpoint, um, it's, you know, getting those additional resources is always a critical thing um, because uh, we are kind of tied with a, a balanced budget. You know, the city is known for a, you know, 20 year plan, a 10 year balanced budget, and one of the hardest things that, that I'm always advocating for is additional grants, additional funding to kick off new programs. But the other half of that, of course, is, is what can we do to, go, to change what, we're, you know, what our standard processes are? And normally that goes through a study issue and all that. Here, you know, Bloomberg Harvard is looking at you know, doing training. Uh, so Harvard Business School, going through case studies and showing what other cities are doing. But also the other half of that is actually providing resources, providing on the ground um, staffing to sit through brainstorming sessions, stakeholder sessions, all that right here in Sunnyvale. So it's been good from that standpoint. And, you know, it's it's been an honor, um, you know, meeting Mike Bloomberg and, and, and just <clears throat> getting a good perspective on you know, what a good city Sunnyvale is and, you know, expounding on on the good things that we're doing here and trying to figure out what we can do better. So so happy that that to go through that program. Um, and then last Thursday, uh, state law lawmakers passed the legislation, the legislature version of the budget, you know, and Democratic leaders continue to negotiate uh, with Governor Newsom uh, to figure out um, what state, the final state budget will look like, you know, the first time in over a decade um, that the governor and the lawmakers actually are dealing with a budget shortfall. 
and it's looking like tens of billions of dollars. You know, so the so the budget is about three hundred and twelve um, um, billion dollar spending plan, um, but and it covers a thirty point seven billion dollar gap. Although I hear different numbers depending upon you know if you, you talk to the legislative analyst office, it conceivably is a lot higher than that. You know, and part of this part of the question, of course, is is we um, because the IRS, um, the state and federal taxes for the majority of the counties in California aren't due until October. And it actually causes a little, uh, some issues as far as what our, what our actual numbers are. Because normally we would have um, pretty firm numbers for what the, what the uh, revenue was for 2022, 2023. That being said, we don't. And so um, it's a lot of guesswork uh, at the state level. So, you know, the, the, legislator, the legislative plan involves, um, you know, borrowing uh, and do, does some cost shift and, and doing some cost shifting that Newsom's proposal didn't do. So, you know, ultimately it's um, a little bit different. We'll see how those have been negotiated. I think the final vote will be on Tuesday and maybe Thursday, but they have to finalize all that by July 1st. Um, and then last Saturday, uh, Sunnyvale had its first national pet appreciation rally at Plaza del Sol. And so it was with the Duo Duo project that actually, you know, um, organizes our uh, pet parade in October. And so, you know, lots of pets, pet owners were there with their, their pets talking about, you know, their story of why they're really part of the family. There were boos, uh, our Sunnyvale uh, uh, canine officers. Uh, were there, uh, you know, have it going through some demonstrations, there were some giveaways, uh, but it was just, you know, a great first event, you know, celebrating how important our pets are to, you know, our lives and to our families. So it was good, a good event. Um, Sunday, of course, was Father's Day. So hopefully you honored um, that favorite father in your life. You know, my father passed away about 10 years ago now. Um, I think this is um, our, his 10 year, just actually yeah, 10 years, 10 years ago, um, just over 10 years ago now that my father passed away. And uh, so it was good to, you know, remember him and, and how he made a difference in my life and, you know, um, was an amazing man from that standpoint, you know, uh, we're coming from uh, real poverty, you know, he was actually born um, on the Indian Reservation in Rapid City, South Dakota, and, you know, to, uh, to basically work his way up and, you know, and come mainly a working man at the end of the day. And, but, but he instilled a lot of my values, um, his values on me. And, you know, a lot of who I am today is because of his, you know, him setting a great example in my life. So um, hopefully you and you you had time with your father or you celebrated that those fathers in your life. Um, Monday was Juneteenth. It was a federal holiday in the US. Um, it wasn't a it wasn't a city holiday, uh, but it com commemorates the emancipation of enslaved African Americans. you know it, it commemorates you know June 19th, uh, 1865 at, and that's the day that, the news for the Emancipation Proclamation, proclamation uh, finally reached the farthest corner of Texas. Uh, you know, it's known as Freedom Day or Emancipation Day. But, but you know, President Biden signed uh, legislation two years ago in 2021 to make it a federal holiday. So, you know, some cities have followed suit. Uh, we actually give several flexible days, so several flexible holidays on top of PTO to our to our uh, employees. And so that can be a day they take or, you know, so it's ultimately, um, but not a city holiday. So city offices remain open and, you know, people can still go to the library and all that, which is, which is fantastic. Um, on Tuesday of this week, you know, President Biden was in the Bay Area and announced a $600 million investment for climate resilience projects across the country um, and a $67 million uh, which would be helping build power lines to support the state's transition to 100% clean energy. So, you know, he was in Palo Alto with Governor Newsom, um, Congressman or Congressmember Eshoo was there. Uh, so uh, good to have him back in the Bay Area. 
uh, and you know, highlighting the good that that administration is doing. Um, and then on Tuesday evening, uh, council met and we started with a closed session. It's our, it was our half yearly review for our city attorney and city manager. And, and so council has really two direct reports, the city attorney and city manager that, that uh, ultimately um, everything that we do from, from um, you know, all the services we provide are under their management. So they have directors underneath them, staff underneath them, and then it's a series of managers and, and lower level staff that do all the work within the city. Uh, but it, it's our, you know, it's councils um, twice a year. So we do one mid-year and one at the end of the year, a review of their performance uh, and kind of giving them feedback of the things that we would like to see, you know. Um, so it's always, in, you know, I think uh, our city attorney and city manager are doing a fantastic job. Um, you know, you look at some of the some of the cities around um, around the Santa Clara County and others that that they're having issues with in turnover at the city manager, city attorney level. And luckily, we've you know we've had both of them for many years now. Um, as for the main meeting, you know, council approved the fiscal year 2023 2024 budget and you know, the resource allocation plan. You know, it was our first. $600 million budget. So the biggest budget uh, in the city's history. Um, and ultimately, you know, it was, you know, it, it was um, the culmination of, you know, a lot of feedback. And so we've had meetings. Uh, so we had a, you know, a budget workshop and we've had lots of, you know, closed one-on-one um, -on -one meetings with city staff to kind of give feedback and, and several, you know, public hearings to get the, the public's feedback, the commissions reviewed it and, you know, certain sections of it and all that. But, but it's good to see, you know, um, the majority of our revenue are, is back to where it was pre-COVID. So it's good from that standpoint and, you know, figuring out what the new fee schedules are and all that. But uh, things are looking good from a city standpoint. You know, we do a conservative view for the majority of what's happening in the city. And, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see a lot of that belt tightening that we did during COVID actually pay off. So beyond that, we, you know, approved um, transportation funds, funds from MTC for finalizing the design at uh, Poplar. So the design to add sidewalks along Poplar uh, right near Peterson uh, Middle School. And so ultimately, uh, you know, from from my standpoint, that's actually been very good because you look at um, what what um, happened, you know, about three years ago now uh, to see that we're finally adding those sidewalks and working with the residents to make sure that that you know, it's safer for our kids to go to school. Um, and then um, on Wednesday of this week, um, there was an unveiling of a quilt at the senior center. And so it's a quilt celebrating the 30 years of friends of the Stevens Creek Trail, you know, uh, it's, you know, our Stevens Creek Trail is, you know, uh, a great gem here in our community. I'm a big user and a big supporter. I was on the Citizens Committee in 2012, 2013, that kind of defined what the next stages would be. That was a four city effort, Mountain View, Sunnyvale, Los Altos, Cupertino, to figure out how to continue that Stevens Creek Trail. And since I've been on council, it's one of the things I've been pushing for. Uh, we finally got funding to kind of finalize the design. Um, so that will, you know, Mountain View is in charge and working on the design from Dale Heatherstone to Remington. And we're in charge of Dale Heather, um, from Remington to Fremont Avenue. So that's moving forward. We, you know, um, I've been working, worked with Mountain View and Sunnyvale uh, to put in additional funding. We got funding from the VTA Measure B funds uh, from uh, 2016. And that whole effort is actually moving forward now. So, so good to see that happening in the community. Good to see that actually being extended. Um, and then last night, um, it was Pride Night, um, Pride Celebration on Murphy Avenue. You know, this is the third annual Pride Celebration, and it's done in conjunction with Silicon Valley Pride and the Santa Clara County of LGBTQ Affairs. Uh, but it was, you know, great to see so many people there and, and you know, uh, after a lot of work, uh, getting uh, a lot of the youth to show up. So, so there was music, there was dancers, you know, lots of free giveaways. Um, um, and it was, you know, from, from my standpoint, it's really important to be an inclusive and ally 
uh, to everyone in our community. You know, it's a very well, you know, we have a very welcoming city. And uh, for me, you know, events like last night are exactly shows how welcoming we are. And, you know, everyone is welcome here. And that's part of our city values. You know, our, sta our statement of values says that, you know, matter, no matter where you're from, no matter what your race is, no matter what your beliefs, um, no matter who you love, you're welcome here in Sunnyvale. And, and that event, you know, was a perfect epitome of, of how, you know, what a welcoming city we are. You know, Assembly Member Evan Lowe was there, uh, several representatives from a few other uh, cities uh, or from the state legislature, um, their representatives were there. But it was really, it was really great from just to see so many people enjoying themselves. We had, you know, people were dancing in the streets for a little bit and then uh, having some performers. So um, just happy that we can be doing this here in Sunnyvale every year. And, and you know, last night was another great event. Thanks to the, the Sunnyvale um, Chamber of Commerce and, and you know, Don Mayer and, and thanks to Mike Johnson at the Sunnyvale Downtown Association for, for organizing it, for, for planning and making sure that it, it you know, went off without a hitch. Uh, and thanks to, of course, the DJ who who provided a lot of music. And, you know, I think it was it was a good event. You know, it was good just to hear from so many long term residents that did they felt seen, they felt heard and and just they're just proud to be part of our city. So um, glad, glad to see so many people out, you know, um, I, you know, as I said previously, you know, we won't be covering COVID numbers anymore unless things, you know, change dramatically. We'll see what the fall looks like. You know, I continue to spend lots of time advocating on our city's behalf, you know, at the county level, at the state level, at the federal level, you know, lots of partners to talk to. Um, uh, for me, um, it's it's one of the most important things that I can be doing as mayor is, you know, making sure active, you know, actively advocating uh, for what's in Sunnyvale's best interest. Uh, let's let me go ahead and announce some of the upcoming events. And as we're getting into summer, Lots of, you know, lots of things will be happening over the next, you know, over the next month or two. Uh, later this morning, and this is why I'm not at the coffee shop later, uh, the law enforcement torch run uh, to basically benefit Special Olympics of Northern California will be going through Sunnyvale. So if you want to come out and cheer us on, we'll be departing from the Arby's parking lot around 1040 a.m. and running east along um, the south side of El Camino Real. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for that perfect spot, we should be patch passing the Starbucks at uh, the Cherry Orchard, um, you know, the right there at Matilda and El Camino, somewhere between uh, 1050 and 1110, you know, um, although, you know, there's lots of places along El Camino that you can be watching at, you know, you have uh, Pete's Coffee at Sunnyvale, um, uh, Saratoga and El Camino, you have, you know, Rubio's and Dave's Hot Chicken on the other side of the street, Lozano's Car Wash, if you want to go get your car washed and, and cheer us on, uh, but lots of places along that area, um, Dunkin' Donuts, um, you can grab yourself a donut and wait for us to pass by, but, but it's really great um, to, to join that, you know, that's why I've been doing that every year since I've been um, as mayor, especially, um, running with uh, public safety and seeing that crowd, even within public safety, grow every year. So um, ultimately, we'll be running, you know, picking up the torch at Arby's um, on from Mountain View, and then running, um, uh, you know, running east to Santa Clara, and then passing it on to um, Santa Clara uh, Police Department on our eastern border. Um, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, actually, uh, from eight thirty to eleven a.m. Uh, is the ninth annual International Day of Yoga at the Sunnyvale Community Center. Uh, so if you're willing, if you want to come join, it's for uh, people of all ages, all abilities. Um, that'll be happening at the, at the community center uh, tomorrow morning. So come join. I'll be there for a little while. Um, and then tomorrow afternoon is the Sunnyvale EV Ride and Drive event. This is an um, in, in-person event. It's basically, it was supposed to happen in March and there was so much rain that it's like we decided to postpone it, but it'll be happening at Baylands Park from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow. You can come test drive an EV 
Um, you can get a free taco. Uh, you can also um, talk to people that own, you know, EVs and and talk and look at different different models. Uh, you can also um, take a, a different electric transportation for a spin. So there'll be some e-bikes e there. So if you want to try try an e-bike, that's, you know, that's great. Uh, but uh, you can follow a link if you go to uh, Sunnyvale um, uh, Environmental Services. They have a sign up. I'll be posting that again uh, later today. But you can, but walk-ins are also welcome. So if you're you're free between 11 and 3, go out to Baylands Park and, and try that out. And then next weekend, uh, Saturday, July 1st, Cup and Cone will be having grand opening at noon. And so they already have a store across from Fremont Avenue, or for, sorry, Fremont High School at Fremont and uh, Sunnyvale, Saratoga, but they're opening a brand new store um, on, on July 1st at noon, uh, right next to Zanato. So right in the Zanato Shopping Center at Fremont Avenue in Mary. So so definitely uh, come, come and uh, have have a cup. You know, uh, let's let's celebrate yet another new business that's opening up here in Sunnyvale. And then, as far as upcoming council meetings, our next meeting is Tuesday, June twenty seventh. So next Tuesday, uh, the last meeting for this fiscal year, and we'll be approving. We'll be looking at approving the proposed utility rate increases for fiscal year twenty twenty three twenty twenty four. And so that's the rate increases for waste wastewater, solid waste utilities for service. And, um, and the city is proposing a 4% increase for water, a 9% increase for wastewater, and a 6% increase for solid waste. And, and so that typically for a single family uh, residential neighborhood, uh, residential um, uh, family will be an increase of about 6.2%. It's about $10.45, sorry, $10.45 on average. So, you know, water is $2.77, wastewater is $5.15, and solid waste is $2.53. Um, so, and just as a reminder, you know, the city doesn't make money on, on the utilities they provide. It's the cost of operation, delivering the services, the cost of personnel, the cost of upgrading um, that equipment. So, so um, that'll be one thing. And then the other thing that we'll be looking at next Tuesday is reviewing um, citywide objective design standards for multifamily residential and mixed use developments. So this is what we do. We have we have design um, objective design standards for single family neighbor single family development, and then we also have something similar, and that's what we'll be looking at the updates to that for mixed use and multifamily residential. So uh, looking forward to that. And then uh, our first meeting in June in July is. Tuesday, July 11th, and council will be looking at the final approval for multiple actions related to the Moffat Park specific plan. And so this has been a long time coming. We've been had lots of discussions of Mo over Moffat Park uh, for the last two or three years. You know, it started uh, just before COVID and then uh, lots of issues as far as doing outreach and, and what we're going to be doing, but it's looking at adding um, an additional 10 million square foot of office space, 20,000 units of housing, and half a million square foot square feet of retail in Moffat Park. And so making sure that it's, it's, an, it's a well-designed community, it's walkable, it's bikeable, you know, all the things that would make it a, a destination location uh, within our city, not just an office park. You know, I was part of the planning commission many years ago when we when we first approved um, the the Moffat Park specific plan, and now you know um, it's it's really critical to to look at from a bigger picture of how to make you know open space there, how to make sure that you know it's safe for people that are walking and biking. You know what are we doing from a transportation standpoint? What are we doing from a retail standpoint to make sure that that people you know have a place to shop you know, in Moffat Park and, you know, go to restaurants, go to grocery stores, all that. So, you know, it's, 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 it's trying to design a small city in the north part of our city. So happy to see that, you know, moving forward. Uh, let me go ahead and get to our weekly questions. If you have a question, just add it to the comments. I'll try to get to it. Susan asked, oh, what was the photo of you in the balloon hat? Uh, yeah, so my, my questions uh, post from yesterday. Uh, last weekend, I was at a 
uh, block party and there were um, there was somebody doing balloon um, animals and <clears throat> other balloon kind of uh, items from that standpoint and and they created a Viking a Viking hat for the mayor and said mayor you know it's like and, and please wear this and in, in lots of photos with the mayor and the Viking hat for me it's like if, if people you know want the mayor to act as a fool you know it's 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 all good fun and you know happy to be part of all your celebrations so that was you know that was Viking for a day for the mayor um, Chris asked, is there anything interesting going on in the city for July 4th? So, you know, no, it should be a relatively calm day. Um, there's actually a red, white, and blue parade in San Jose for July 4th. There's uh, lots of events around the Bay Area. There's a veterans picnic um, at uh, in El Viso. So that's happening, you know, midday. And then there'll be fireworks in the evening. You know, Sunnyvale um, doesn't have you know, it doesn't allow fireworks, um, but you can see them at Great America, at Shoreline. Um, um, so there are places that you can go watch fireworks if you want. Uh, Joanne asked, wondering if you have any insight on what is going into the old Wendy's building um, on Matilda. So yes, um, I got an update on that. It is planned to be a Taco Bell and they're doing the, the renovations right now, but that is moving forward. So we'll have soon have another restaurant uh, right there at Matilda and Maud. Um, Judy asked, when does the summer music start? So currently we actually have uh, DJs playing on Wednesday and Thursday nights, uh, but the summer music will start um, the, the week after July 4th week. So, so um, it'll be Wednesday night rock, and Saturday jazz, and it'll start um, basically the second week in July and go through the end of August. So I think it's eight weeks of eight weeks of music downtown on Murphy Avenue. Uh, Susan asked, I saw your post about the utility box art. Where is it going? So, you know, about a year and a half ago, we did our first phase of the utility box art program, and that did 12 locations in downtown. Uh, phase two is 16 locations from around the city, not just the downtown. And it's you're seeing those go up right now. Uh, you'll see, so I was just visiting, uh, actually uh, just yesterday, I met the artist doing the utility box uh, across from the tennis center. It's, it's actually really good. It's, it's uh, birds playing tennis. Uh, actually a perfect, perfect location for that. But, but I'm seeing, you know, uh, art, uh, new utility art boxes, um, uh, utility box art going up, you know, around the city. And, and so if you take a look, go say hi to the artists, thank them for what they're doing, you know, uh, and talking to that artist, uh, she said lots of residents had been uh, saying thank you and, and making sure that um, they telling her that she that, that they really appreciated uh, her adding a little color to the drab utility boxes that we have around the city. And so, yeah, we have. Um, let's see, the, the latest one is going from, you know, Crossman and Caribbean in the north to Belleville and um, Belleville and Homestead in the south. And so pretty much all over the city is actually being uh, utilized to to beautify, you know, beautify the different neighborhoods and different areas of the city. Uh, Joan asked, what is the time frame for the walking paths and the outdoor amphitheater to be completed by the new Civic Center? On, um, will it be 2023? I'm excited at the proposal of summertime outdoor movies and Shakespeare in the Park. Uh, yeah, so it was supposed to be mid-September. PG&E continues to delay and and we might not have it finished until October now. We're seeing, you know, I've been doing lots of advocacy with PG&E in the background and they were able to pull it in a lot better than where it started initially. But now it's still questionable whether or not it'll be open by state of the city. But definitely this year, uh, all, the, all the outdoor work, you know, they started deconstruction of the old rabbit hutches, um, the old portable buildings. They still need to work on city hall and the city hall annex, uh, but it's going to, it's going to take a while. Um, Melissa asked, when are you going, when are you guys going to put a four-way stop sign on Washington Avenue and Carroll? Because many accidents happen on the street um, because there's that being a two-way stop sign. You know, 
so the city doesn't immediately put stop signs wherever you know wherever we would like or wherever people want you know normally they do a full evaluation after the residents request it um, i have talked to staff and they're taking a look at that but you know i hadn't heard about any accidents at this intersection and so had asked staff you know to look into it but uh ultimately these you know mckinley um washington avenues are considered considered arterials so you don't put stop signs at every intersection. Uh, it's basically feeder streets to, to get to bigger streets. So, so they feed into, you know, Sunnyvale Avenue. And, and you'll see that around, kind of around um, Sunnyvale, that there are streets that are kind of, you know, feeder streets from residential neighborhoods going out. So, you know, it's much like uh, on Washington um, at, you know, along Washington between Matilda and, um, Matilda and Mary, you don't have stop signs. You basically, you know, have cars um, going, and so you don't have stop signs um, along that entire along that entire area. It's more for feeder traffic to go into Matilda to go into Mary at the end of the day. Um, Joan asked, "What? Just curious, where in Sunnyvale is Applied's new facility? Is it the old AMD campus or National Sites? No, it's." Um, the old AMD, AMD site is now, of course, the six and a half acre Mwekma Park, um, but the new campus is on Arquez, adjacent to their old facility, about halfway between Wolf and Lawrence, right near commercial. Um, but, you know, Applied is looking to build, um, and this is the whole $4 billion CHIP Act investment here in Sunnyvale for Applied, but Applied is looking to build a 180,000 square foot uh, facility, um, and then, or, or at least basically, uh, mainly um, square foot space for for R and D development, and then um, they'll be breaking ground on that in just about you know in the next few months. And so they plan to open it in the first quarter of 2026, and they're already being pushed to go faster. So we'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, Dreedy asked, dear Mayor Klein, what can be can what steps can be taken by us, Sunnyvale residents, to improve public transportation in Sunnyvale, especially as our traffic dilemma is getting out of hand. And so one of the best things you can do is just make your voice heard to VTA to, to you know, like so that we've had a lot of, we had a town hall last month to talk uh, with VTA and Fremont Union High School District on how to improve transportation for um, our students going from, from North Sunnyvale to Fremont High School to Homestead High School. You know that that that's one way you can write emails to council. That's actually very useful. I was very you know disheartened that we actually closed a study issue that I had proposed about an EV shuttle program, um, and so we closed that down earlier this year. Didn't fund it. Um, I still think that there's a lot of value in that EV shuttle program, and so hopefully we'll see you know um, whether or not um, whether or not we can get that going and get that across the line. There's actually a, a Puri Park um, shuttle program that should be starting later this year that might be kind of phase one of getting that done. Um, <clears throat> George asked, what is the schedule for upgrades to the library? So will council be making, something will come back to council later this year. Uh, so I think it's uh, early fall, if I remember, uh, September, um, I think. Um, uh, but ultimately, it's it'll be a report to council on you know the cost differential, kind of what the what the breakdown is of either doing an addition and renovation of the existing uh, library um, or building a brand new library. So <clears throat> that's the first big. A uh, big decision that council needs to make, and then we need to figure out how we're going to fund it. Uh, the branch library in Lakewood um, in Lakewood Park will actually be breaking ground at the end of the summer, and it'll be open by the end of next year. So, so we'll actually have a new branch library in North Sunnyvale, and so happy to finally get them the services that we would like to get them. But, but um, from a um, from a from a main library standpoint, council still has some decisions to make. And then we'll figure out, you know, how we'll get that get that funded is, I think, I think the next big step. Um, I don't see any other questions. Well, maybe. 
it's always an issue that sometimes the questions don't come up like I'm like they're supposed to. Um, if not, I will get back to. Um, oh, thank you for the Pride event. You know, um, I I do think it was wonderful. Yeah, I totally totally agree. Um, the Pride, you know, it it was. This is Sunnyvale at its best. You know, I was actually surprised in talking to a few people at the county that that in some of the other cities um, they actually had protesters uh, when the pride flag was being raised. They had you know people protesting it at a, a at a talk at the library. So you know, happy that happy that you know Sunnyvale is such a great city. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for joining me again this week. You know, we live in interesting times and, you know, new issues come up almost every day. But I want you all to know that no matter what challenges we face, we face them together. You know, I'm proud of Sunnyvale and how residents have responded to the multiple multitude of challenges over the last few years. You know, I'm thankful for everyone in our community who, who really makes a difference, you know, whether or not they're helping out you know, their neighbor or the community in general, you know, giving back, showing their generosity and the kindness, you know, your actions and your attitude really do make a difference. Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together and we will get through this together. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>